Hey y'all, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. How are y'all doing? If this is your first time here, I welcome you. If you've been here before, welcome back as always. I'm out on the boat here, about to do some trout fishing. Would like to take some home. We just got a new air fryer at the house, so it'd be nice to take some speckled trout fillets home and use them in the air fryer. You know, some extra virgin olive oil, some seasoning. I think they sound pretty dang good. So I'm gonna be throwing a variety of soft plastics here. I got a bunch of Z-Mans have some procure and plenty of inshore setups. Sit back, relax, and let's get to fishing. Look at that wake that thing's pushing. Whoa. Wow. Look at the wake those dolphins are pushing. That is so cool. <laughs> Check that out. Those dolphins are, those dolphins just waked my boat. That was amazing. All right, I'm going to start out by throwing the Z-Man minnows in the red bone color on an eighth ounce Z-Man jig head and 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. If you know me well, you know that this is one of my absolute favorite lures. It's actually landed me two snook in Alabama, caught me plenty of trout, redfish, bass. So I continue to throw it. Something about that red bone color just does extremely well in our waters. Now, I am going to add some Menhaden Procure to it this morning just to give it that added scent and cover up all that plasticky taste to the fish and my human scent off of this bait. But that bait is ready to go. I'll be throwing this on a Shimano Banford 2500 HG 15 pound Power Pro braid. And then this is a seven foot medium fast St. Croix. Finally seeing some bait. That's a good sign. Ooh. Yeah. That was a nice thump. That was a nice thump. <laughs> First one of the morning. Is it going to be a keeper? It's a trout. It's a trout. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful trout, too. Oh, man. I'll, I'll probably boat flip this one. That will go in the cooler. Man, first one of the morning. What a excellent fish. Man, it's so cold too. Check that out. Look where that bait is. No hesitation. Thank you, buddy. All right, start the day off with the 16 inch speckled trout on that Z-Man Minnows. Telling you, this bait always does me good. He twisted it up, so I'll have to readjust it on the hook. But this yellow mouth spotted sea trout, speckled trout, that's a perfect specimen. This one will go great at home cooked up fresh so i got a nice cooler full of ice i got about 20 pounds of ice in the cooler so let's go ahead and toss it up in there and try to catch us another one finding bait finding birds that are searching for bait that's your key to catching fish no matter what time of year it is cast that bait back out i love it i love this type of fishing they thump it like there's no doubt when you get a bite Cause you'll be running up against a bunch of trees and stuff and once i oh see there's another thump that was running into the bait but those those speckled trout have no hesitation just you feel that tick and then you got it There's a good fish. It's a really nice fish. That's a trout. Oh yeah. Ah, he's short. He's big though, he's thick. Mm, beautiful fish. But he is right on the dot, so it's gonna go back. But old snaggle tooth trout. So let's go ahead and get him back in the water released and let it get bigger. Oh, and he's gone. Ooh, that water's cold, but those speckled trout are pretty fish though, especially when they come out of clean water like this. They have plenty of dots on there or spots. They're just beautiful fish in general. You know, I'm making multiple casts to the same areas. There's a ton of bait hanging around, like actual mullet, you know, so you have to be able to entice these fish to eat this plastic bait by doing something different. Present it to them as an easy target. Well, I hear a bass over there. We'll get to it. But an easy target or making it look different than everything around it. Oh. 
That was a nice hit. Come on. Do it again. Got him. Got him again. Oh, shaking his head like crazy. <laughs> he ain't going to keep, though. He is not a tiny one. But I can already tell you he's not long enough. Dang, calm down. This is a healthy fish ready to go back. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, yeah. Good fish. That's a really good fish. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's a solid trout right there. That's what I'm talking about. Solid trout. Get in the boat. Yeah, that's a, that's a fish I've been after all day. <laughs> oh yeah. That's the fish I've been after all day. Big old mouth on him and he could not resist that trout sickle Z-Man. I'm gonna put it in the cooler. All it took was a color change and ended up with the biggest trout of the day so far. That's awesome when a plan works out. I love it. Okay, I just switched colors again to another C.A. Richardson Flats Class TV custom color here. This is a tater salad. It is, it's got some speck in it. It's got a chartreuse tail. It's just a good looking bait. And I'm showing you all this just to present to you that in a day of fishing, you know, you can go out there with just one bait and catch a bunch of fish. But on, on a tough day of fishing, you gotta get out there and change up, change up, change up, change your technique, your retrieve, your location, if you have a boat. But a lot of times color changes, bait profile changes, lead head changes can make a big difference in the same body of water that you're fishing i hope not to bore you with all this but i'm just it's a lot of information up here that i'm i try to present over a period of time and uh this is just one of those things where i go through a bunch of color changes you know three main colors you want something really natural like that red bone you want something for extremely dirty water like this tater salad color and then you can get something that's kind of neutral like this new penny color does good pretty much clear water dirty water cloudy days sunny days so you really only need two or three colors you don't have to get the whole tackle shop but it is nice to have a good variety trout kind of quit biting let's see if we can find us a little bass hanging around over here the wind picked up there's some storms north of us oh man see there was a fish right there switch to the slim swim here Oh, there's one. Okay, finally. <laughs> That's all I wanted. Just one bass. Just to call it a day. Check that out. I just wanted one little bass to round out the trip here. He's not a giant, but that is a beautiful bass. Check out the markings on it. He ate that little slim swim. You like that bait, huh? <laughs> Check that out. It's like perfect for him. But I'm going to let you go. Here you go, buddy. Beautiful fish though, healthy fish. There you go. There's like thousands of mullet out here. And every time you cast out, you just thump, 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 thump. And then finally got a little bass. So that was a good way to round out the trip here with this little swim bait. All right, y'all, I think I just finished the day off with that little largemouth bass. He is a little bitty quarter pound largemouth. That's still fun nevertheless. But I am going to take these fish home and do them in the air fryer. Let me go ahead and head back, get everything ready. But I am at home. I'm going to get my two specks out. This one's a bigger one for the day that I kept. And then I kept another one. Let's go ahead and clean these fish up. I'm just going to fillet them out. So we're going to go from this to a filleted fish, right? To this right here check out these fillets right there awesome speckled trout fillets these are going to taste so good in the air fryer so i got my speckled trout in a bowl so i couldn't find my big thing of extra virgin olive oil this is all i could find around the house and i don't feel like going out and getting anything else right now so this will make do and there should be enough in there but i want a good coating of extra virgin olive oil on this fish because that's what's going to give it that golden brown color and make it nice and crispy. Not afraid to get my hands dirty here, so let's go ahead and get a nice coating on them. 
All right, next, my ingredients list here, I have some of this Uncle Buck's fish batter mix. This is the original. This is from Bass Pro Shops, which is actually some pretty good stuff. So we'll go ahead and pour it on our fish here. It's very informal. It's supposed to be really quick, like most of my recipes. So you can go more in depth and more ingredients if you like, but I try to keep it simple for me. And it still tastes good. As always, have some Chef Paul seafood magic. Go ahead dust it here with some of the seafood magic. Good thing about Chef Paul's that I really like is it's not that salty, but it's very flavorful. So you can add salt to taste, which I don't eat that much salt or consume that much sodium. So I'll usually add a dash like we're going to now. So just a little dash of salt there. And then lastly, some ground black pepper. Just a little bit in there, mixed together. Now, we're gonna mix this together and make sure all our fish is nice and coated with the seasoning. You can give it a shake. There we go. That smells actually really good. Between the Chef Paul's, that black pepper, and that original fish batter mix, that actually smells really good. Let's come to our air fryer here. Hit air fry. Let's get the temperature up to 390 degrees, which is a little bit more than you would do if you were deep frying. And we're gonna set it for 12 minutes here. Now, let's put our fish in, which you don't wanna overcrowd it. So I'll probably have to do two batches, but let's get the thicker pieces in first. So we'll do four pieces right now. And then the other four will be our second batch. Like I said, you don't wanna overcrowd this so they can all cook even. Go ahead, close it, hit start. So that's gonna be cooking at 390 degrees for 12 minutes, which halfway through you can come back and flip them if you want, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna let it do its thing. We'll come back and check it, and they should be nice, air fried up, get that golden crispy crust, and should be really nice for dinner. All right, man, that actually looks perfect. If these were a lot thicker fillets, like say a snapper or something, or a thicker redfish, I would flip it halfway, but these look perfectly cooked. So let's go ahead and put them on our plate. All right, I got me a spatula here. Let's go ahead and get this fish. Oh, that looks amazing right now. <laughs> that looks really good. And it smelled delicious the whole time it was frying. Let's go ahead and plate that. Next thing I wanna do Top it off with some lemon. There we go. Mighty ingredient list to make this homemade cocktail sauce to dip our delicious looking fried fish in there. So I got some horseradish here, some regular ketchup, Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. If you know about Worcestershire sauce, this stuff is really delicious. And then half of a lemon. So let's go ahead. This is nothing crazy specific measurements. Just gonna take a small spoonful of the horseradish, put in our bowl. That horseradish is actually really fresh. It smells pretty good, even though you don't want to eat this stuff by itself because it will burn your nose. Let's take some of this ketchup here, squeezed in the bowl. I want to fill most of it up. You know, I kind of do like a three to one ratio of ketchup to horseradish. And now you can mix this together just like that and you would have some very basic cocktail sauce. But just to give it an added flavor, we're going to add some of this Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire. And I would say about a teaspoon, but just a few drops like that. And then let's go ahead and squeeze half this lemon. Try not to get any seeds in there. As I proceed to get a seed in there, we'll pick that out. <laughs> now let's mix it together without making a mess here. Probably could have done it in a little bit bigger bowl. But you want to just get a thorough mixture. Make sure all that Worcestershire sauce and ketchup and horseradish are mixed together very nicely. And then you can usually add a little bit of salt, which I'll do here. Just a little bit. Don't go overboard with the salt, but everything's to taste. All right, and there's some homemade cocktail sauce. That smells wonderful right there. It smells like the water. It smells like boiled shrimp, if you know what I mean. It smells great. So there's no better way to enjoy your meal, even though it's cold and the wind's blowing like crazy, but by the water. Just makes it taste so much better. Let's go ahead and break a piece in half. Oh, wow. Look how white and flaky that meat is. That is a thick speckled trout right there. So let's go ahead and bite in this delicious looking piece here. Mm. 
that's phenomenal. Different than deep frying because deep frying, you take in a lot of that oil and grease. And this, you don't taste any of that. You taste just that fish and then whatever seasoning and crispy batter that you put on it. And that's wonderful right there. That, that flaky fish is so fresh tasting. There's no fishy taste of it at all. And speckled trout is really good anyway because it's a drum, it's related to redfish, they taste good. But let's go ahead, take another bite of this just by itself because it's so fresh. Mmm. Now I'm going to take a piece and dip it in our cocktail sauce here, which you can do tartar as well, but this gives it a nice little zing or contrast to the frying batter. So let's go ahead and do that one. Mmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Y'all got to try this yourself if you have an air fryer or even a regular fryer, but definitely an air fryer seems to be a little healthier option. You don't get that overwhelming taste of grease and oil, and you don't have to pat nothing down. That is phenomenal. That is an amazing plate of food right there. I'm going to go ahead and close out this video so I can enjoy my mid-afternoon snack because that tasted amazing. I appreciate y'all for watching as always. If you hit that like button, I appreciate it. It helps a lot with the channel and commenting and subscribing. These videos definitely take a lot of effort to do. It's fun. I love fishing and I love doing it for y'all. So if you just like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Hopefully you can get out there and cook your catch as well. And you can learn something from these videos. Seasoned anglers and new anglers alike. I always like to take something away from the water when I go out fishing, and I always learn something new every time I go. I appreciate y'all for watching as always, though. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord Hupa for everything he does for us. We'll see you later. <laughs>